The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. LSMFT. 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 Remember, year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 49, American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. You said it. L-S-M-F-T. And the quality of your cigarette depends on the quality of tobacco that goes into it. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So remember. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're broadcasting from Palm Springs, California. Palm Springs, the garden spot of the desert where the star of our show went for a cold and caught one. And here he is, Jack... Achoo! Gesundheit Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I wish you wouldn't give a false impression about the climate in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that I was sitting in the sun and it was so hot I caught this cold fanning myself with a Florida newspaper. <laughs> really, the, uh, the, the weather is beautiful here. I know, Jack, but why does the sun go down so early? Don, it comes up in the morning, takes a look at the prices, and ducks behind the mountain. <laughs> but it's really... But it's really wonderful here, Don. There's so much to do. Ah, uh, it certainly is, Jack. And I've been taking advantage of it. Sunbathing, swimming, horseback riding. Wait a minute, Don. Wait a minute. You mean you found a horse that could hold you up? <laughs> well, yes, Jack. I was riding a brown horse. You passed me on the trail. What are you shouting for? Call <laughs> <laughs> me on a trail. <laughs> Was that you? I should have known. <laughs> First time I ever saw a horse with arch support. <laughs> and a cane yet. That horse was so sway back, you looked like you were riding a slice of cantaloupe. <laughs> if I told my riders once, I told them a thousand times, that joke is no good. I told them... Leave <laughs> it in anyway. But I'm pretty clever. Just think, a few weeks ago, there were people who couldn't stand me. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody. Hey, Mary, I've never seen you look so good. You've only been here a week, and you've got such a beautiful tan. You must have been out in the sun a lot. Yeah, I wish I could find a room. <laughs> oh, well, it is. It is awfully crowded here. You're not kidding. Yesterday, I put a penny in a gum machine, pulled the lever, and a woman stuck her head out and said, Sorry, no vacancies. <laughs> Mary, if we weren't in Palm Springs, I think you were making that up. Huh? I didn't believe it myself until I saw the sign. The sign? Yeah, it said, please do not shake machine, you'll wake up the baby. <laughs> oh, yes, I, uh, I know that gum machine. It's called the Juicy Fruit Hacienda. <laughs> <laughs> They're booked up until April. Oh, know. by the way, Mary, I saw you riding a bicycle down Palm Canyon Drive. You look very cute in your sunsuit. Well, thanks, Don. You look cute in yours, too. What? <laughs> Don... Now, you walking around in a sunsuit? That takes a lot of courage. Jack, what about a you? A lot of sunsuit, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don Wilson is the only guy I know who gets his suntan oil at a filling station. You know? <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying, Don? Um, 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 oh. oh Jack, what about you and that corny cowboy out there? 
What's it repeat that? What did you say? Uh, what about you in that corny cowboy outfit? Oh, I looked all right. And those high heel shoes you were wearing. Wow. Well, that shows how much you know. For your information, young lady, all cowboys wear high heel shoes. With open toes, you're crazy. <laughs> Well, I had to cut them. They hurt my feet. What a cowboy. You should have seen him, Don, swaggering around town with two guns in his belt. Three. One's a cigarette lighter. <laughs> anyway, Mary, when you're in Palm Springs, you're supposed to dress like a tough Westerner. Some tough Westerner. Your spurs still have dough in them from cutting out cookies. <laughs> Well, you ate most of them, sister, so don't be funny. I know what's cooking. Here. Okay, folks, the show may be flopping, but now Harris is here to start things popping, so shower me with that sun kissed applause. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish, Phil, I wish you wouldn't sneak in here like that. Now, let me ask you something. Why didn't you show up for rehearsal yesterday? Where were you? Well, I'm sorry, Jackson. You see, I couldn't get a room in Palm Springs, so I'm staying out at the B-Bar H. Oh, the B-Bar H, huh? Yeah. What are you living in, a room or a cabin? In the in bar. The bar. It's it's crowded, crowded out, out there, there, too. <laughs> Hard to guess that, you know. You must have loved that, Bill. No, no, not anymore, partner. I'm on a wagon. You on the wagon? Yes, sirree. All I take is two drinks a day. Phil, if you're on the wagon, you shouldn't drink anything. Look, Jackson, my stomach's like a steel mill. You can shut it down, but don't let the fire go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. That right arm of yours is a pretty good stoker, too. Now, it's uh, time for a band number. Are your boys ready to play? Yeah, Jackson, but I forgot to bring the music. You didn't forget it, brother. I hit it. <laughs> music only confuses them anyway. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's don't start that again. You've been riding my boys long enough. My orchestra is not as bad as you so unprovocatively infer. There he goes with that word again, unprovocatively. Phil, you used that same word last Sunday. Look, when I spend a whole winter learning something, I ain't gonna throw it away on one broadcast. <laughs> well, Phil, unprovocatively or not, all I know is when your band plays a number, it sounds like a filibuster with instruments. Now, go ahead and Hold play. it, hold it a minute. Jackson, what was that lovely word you just said? Filibuster. Filibuster? Gee, I already know unprovocatively, and now filibuster. Say, Jackson, how do you spell filibuster? C-A-T. Now, well, go ahead and play. C-A-T, filibuster. I'll have to remember that. Yes, do, do. Play something. <laughs> Lawyer Indian Chief, played by Phil Harris, and his sweetest music, this side of a Cathedral City Orchestra. <laughs> what a band. They look like a whole month of lost weekend. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Jackson, okay, but I still say my orchestra is not as bad as you so unprovocatively infer. There he goes again. Phil, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. If my band is as lousy as you say it is, why do you have them on your program? Because I feel it's my civic duty to keep them off the street. <laughs> That's why. What a bunch of guys. Every time we have a sound effect of a police siren, they throw up their hands and holler, we was framed. <laughs> Then they get into a big argument over who's going to ride on the back step. 
some musicians. Bill, how long have you had your boys been with you? About 14 years. So you ought to buy them some new clothes. <laughs> the numbers on their shirts are beginning to fade. <laughs> Dress them up a little. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Jackson, I'm telling you for the last time, my band is not as bad as you so unprovocatively filibuster. <laughs> Filibuster? C-A-T, C-A-T. <laughs> Go away, will you? How do you like that, man? Tell him C-A-T spelled filibuster, he believes it. Well, I think it's a shame, though, you take advantage of Phil just because he's a dope. You tell him, Libby. <laughs> <laughs> but Mary, it, it's such a simple word, filibuster. Oh, sure, I'll bet you don't even know what it means. I do, too. The filibuster is when a man gets up and, well, he says a lot of things that don't quite... Well, he, he rambles on and on. That's a tobacco auctioneer. <laughs> I don't mean him. What I mean oh, is... Oh, Mary, Mary, what Jack is trying to say is that a filibuster is an innocuous speech, the main purpose of which is not to necessarily convey subject matter, but to deliberately delay the introduction of controversial issues. I never should have gone on the way. <laughs> Quiet, Phil. Now, now, I'll give you an example. If I knew that Jack was going to cut my salary, I'd prevent him from telling me by filibustering. Oh, oh, Don, I'm glad you mentioned that. By a strange coincidence, I was looking over my budget, and would you mind taking... L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., lucky strike means fine tobacco. A little cut. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Don. Tick, 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 A cut. Yes, a little Sir, you bet with men and on tobacco best, it's lucky's two to one. Don. Lucky strikes are made of the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco. Phil. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., L.S. Barry. Lucky strike for now on 25 years because I've seen him... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not going to cut anybody's salary. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 oh. oh. Everybody's so impetuous. C-A-T, impetuous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Phil, <laughs> that's what a filibuster is. Now, let's get on with the... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Barry, this is Rochester. Rochester, you know I'm in the middle of a program. Do you have to call me now? Well, this is an emergency. Every time you drive my car any place, there's an emergency. What happened now? Well, boss, you know after you pass Riverside where the highway runs parallel to the railroad tracks? Yeah? I was driving along, minding my own business, and as I passed the train, the engineer stuck his head out and yelled, which way to Palm Springs? Uh-huh. And I made the fatal mistake of saying, follow me. Follow oh, you? Rochester, are you trying to tell me you had a wreck with the train? Boss, let's just call it a mismating of a metallic personality. What? If a train pulls into Palm Springs wearing fender pants with a sharp crease, they're yours. This is terrible. Which train was it? Well, now it's the Atkinson Topeka and Chevrolet. <laughs> that, now I'll have to buy a new car. You better buy some new clothes, too. New clothes? You know that hook on the train that picks up the mail bag? Yes. It's got your laundry. <laughs> My lawn at Rochester, all my shirts were in that bag. Don't worry, boss. I wired ahead to the next station. What do you say? No starch. <laughs> See, I didn't know the Harvey girls were ironing on the side. Now, Rochester, you get out here the best way you can, will you? Oh, okay, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> my car didn't have nine lives. I don't know what I'd do. Every time you're near a road, aren't you glad you've got a nose? And if the dawn is fresh with dew, aren't you glad you're you? When the meadow lark appears, aren't you glad you've got two ears? And if your heart is singing too, aren't you glad you're you? You can see a summer sky or touch a friendly hand 
or taste an apple pie. Pardon the grammar, but ain't life grand. And when you wake up each morn, aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you got the whole day through. Aren't you glad you're you? You can see your summer sky or touch your friendly hand or taste an apple pie. Pardon the grammar, but ain't life grand. And when you wake up each morning, aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you got the whole day through. Aren't you glad you're you? Well, aren't you glad you're you, sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, Larry. And now, kids, after the show tonight, I want you all to come over to my place and have some sandwiches and coffee. You know, I've, uh, I've got uh, Eddie Cantor's house here. Oh, you have? <laughs> Mary, what's so funny about my having Eddie Cantor's house? Well, tell Don how you got it. Mary, it's not that important. I got the house. That's all that counts. <laughs> Well, anyway, Don, here's the way it happened. It happened, it happened. <laughs> Jack and I came down <laughs> to Palm Springs last Monday. When we arrived in town, we parked the car and walked down the street looking for a real estate agent. Mary, isn't Palm Springs wonderful? You know, I like to come down here. It's the only chance I get to wear my cowboy suit. Jack, don't walk so fast. The sand gets in my open toe shoes. Mine, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting hungry. So am I. Let's get something to eat. All right, maybe we can... Well, we're in luck. There's a hot dog stand. Some luck. You wait here. I'll be right back. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like them and they're all red hot. Two. Uh, two hot dogs, please. Couple puppies coming up. <laughs> Say, I... I remember you. What are you doing in Palm Springs? Well, I'm opening up a new branch. So far, I got a hot dog stand in Santa Monica, Pasadena, Care, and um, San Bernardino, <laughs> Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamongo. Oh, and now, and now you've got one in Palm Springs, huh? Yes, you see, I'm opening up so many stands that everybody in California will soon be hot dog unconscious. <laughs> you... You mean hot dog conscious? Unconscious. Conscious. Taste him. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how, how about my hot dog? Coming up. Uh, what kind of mustard would you like? Strong, mild, or irresistible? <laughs> mild, please. Well, here you are. Thank you. How much are the hot dogs? To you, ten cents. Well, how much are they to other people? Ten cents. Who do you think you are? <laughs> okay, okay. Here's your money. Thank you very much. People in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like them and they're all red hot. <laughs> Here you are. Here you are, Mary. Here's your hot dog. Jack, I don't think hot dog's going to do me. I want a regular lunch. But, Mary, to us, these were ten cents apiece. To us? Well, how much are they to other people? Ten cents. Who do you think we are? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, if we eat these, we won't be wasting time. I have to find a place to live here. Well, first, let's have a regular lunch. All right, come on. We'll go over to the Dunes. That's a nice restaurant. <laughs> It's sure crowded today. I hope we get a table. Yeah. Here comes the... Oh, pardon me. Are you the waiter? Well, what do you think I am with this shirt, tie, and shoes on? A guest? <laughs> mm. I thought I could get away from him down here. I'd like to get a table for two, please. As soon as I have one, go into the bar and I'll call you. I don't want to go into the bar. Well, go somewhere. I can't stand you here. 
Now, look, we came in here to get something to eat, and if you don't show... Stop that... breathing on my discharge button! <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, all I want... Say, Jack, Jack. What? Isn't that Eddie Cantor sitting all alone at that table? Eddie Cantor? Where? Oh, yeah, maybe we can sit with him. Yeah, that's Eddie. Gee, I hope I look as good as he does when I'm his age. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go sit with him. Say, Jack, I just thought of something. Eddie's got a house in Palm Springs. Maybe he'll rent your room. What do you mean, rent me a room? He's a friend of mine. He'll probably give it to me for nothing. Let's sit with him. Hello, Eddie. How are you? Well, Jack, Mary, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Say, uh, I haven't seen you in a long time, Jack. You look marvelous. Well, thanks, Eddie, but I have been a little sick, you know. Sick or not, I hope I look as good as you do when I'm your age. <laughs> You did. <laughs> Shut up. Well, how's the family, Eddie? How's Ida and the boys? The boys? Yeah, your writers. Oh, poo! <laughs> For a minute, you scared me. I haven't been home all week, you know. You haven't? No, but I'm leaving for Los Angeles tonight. Eddie, you're going back? to Los Angeles? Gee, I'm starved, Jack. I'm going to order something. Go ahead, Mary. Incidentally, the peanut butter sandwiches here are... <laughs> are delicious. Incidentally, I'm ordering the roast beef. Incidentally, the roast beef costs $1.75. Incidentally, everybody's looking at us. Shut up! <laughs> All right, Mary, you can have the roast beef. But if I want to kiss later, don't ask what for. <laughs> Oh, brother, what you have to go through to keep from starving. Say, I'm kind of hungry myself. What are you having, Eddie? It looks good. Chicken soup with egg noodles. Chicken soup with egg noodles? I think I'll have some of that. Okay, I'll have the way to bring you a spoon. No, no. <laughs> no, no, Eddie. Eddie, I'll order some. You know, a bowl for myself. They haven't got it today. I brought this from home. <laughs> oh, spoon, waiter. Spoon, spoon. You don't have to throw it. And, waiter, bring me an order of roast beef. At last, a sale in this booth. I can't believe it. Fresh guy. See, this soup looks good, Eddie. Yeah, let's start. Ready? Scoop. You know, Eddie, I'm sure glad I... Boy, this soup is hot. You know, Eddie, I'm sure glad I... Eddie, would you mind eating with your left hand and putting your right arm around my shoulder? I'm too far from the bowl. Look, Jack. Huh. Jack, why don't you put your right hand through my left sleeve, then we can both dip at the same time. No, then we'd have to cut a hole in your coat. That won't work. Why don't you put the bowl on my head and eat piggyback? <laughs> you go and get that roast beef. I think we're all right now, Eddie. Let's go. Okay, ready? Scoop. As I was saying, Eddie, I'm sure glad I bumped into... Jack, the... would you mind breaking a cracker and putting it into the soup? But I can't stand crackers in my soup. Well, break one in any way and float it over to my side. <laughs> okay. There. Anyway, Eddie, I'm sure glad I... You see? You see? The crackers aren't floating. They're all on my side. Well, tip the bowl a little. Tip the bowl a little. Oh, yeah. C-A-T. Get ready, Eddie. <laughs> Forward, soup. Say, Mary, while you're waiting, why don't you get a spoon and join us? Don't bring guests. It's crowded enough. <laughs> well, I've had enough anyway. Hey, here's your roast beef. Thank you. You want three forks with it, or are the boys sitting this one out? <laughs> Don't be so smart. Now, Eddie, as I was saying, I'm sure glad I bumped into you. You see, I'm going to stay in Palm Springs for a while, and I was wondering if you knew of any place where I could live. Uh, when did you say you were going back, Eddie? Tonight. Oh, no. Oh. Well, I was just wondering if you knew of any place where I could live from tonight on. Is it? Well, Jack, I can't think of any place for rent at the moment, but say, I'll tell you what. What, what? Tell me what. What, what? What, what, what? 
No, no, I don't think you'd like it. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Tell me, tell me. What, what are you going to say, Eddie? Well, I happen to have a little house down here, Eddie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So why don't you stay there? Well, uh, darn nice, Eddie. What would you charge me for? Well, Jack, we're friends. We've known each other for years. Take the house for nothing. No, no, Eddie. Now, wait. Friendship is friendship, but I don't want to take advantage of it. I insist on paying you for the house. Oh, take it for nothing, please. I'll feel better. But, Eddie, I'll feel much better if you charge me something for it. A little something. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how much do you want for one week? Three hundred dollars. Three... three hundred dollars? Isn't that a big jump from nothing? <laughs> Uh, waiter, bring me some more roast beef. We'll be here a long time. Mary, look, Eddie, $300 is a lot of money. But, Jack, look what you're getting. A tennis court. I don't play tennis. A swimming pool. Look, I can't swim. And a beautiful kitchen. I know you make cookies. <laughs> Eddie, I still think $300 is a little high. All right, you can have the house for $250. How's that? Look, Eddie, give me the house for nothing. You'll feel better, like you said. <laughs> All right, Jack, I'll give you the house for nothing, but do me one favor. What? There are plenty of hotels in Palm Springs. Don't start a new one, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't. Thanks, Eddie. But, but just a minute, Jack. Before I give you the key, I think I'd better call Ida and see if it's okay. All right, Eddie, do it now. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, Mary, this is really a break, isn't it? I never dreamed I'd get Candor's house for nothing. Yeah, I can give one room to Don, one to Phil, one room to you. Wait a minute, Ida. Don't hang up. But Ida. But Ida. Ida, I couldn't turn him down. He's an old friend. He's an old what? <laughs> but Ida, Ida, how would you feel if I was in his position? How much can he make selling cigarettes? <laughs> but Ida, now I... Now look, Ida, I'm the boss. I'm not going to argue with you any longer. I promised Jack Benny you could have the house and you're going to get it. Goodbye. Well, Jack, it's all settled. And are you in luck? To anybody else, the house would be $300. And to me, it's for nothing? $300. Who do you think you are? <laughs> oh, well, the soup didn't cost me anything. Come on, Mary, let's go. We'll be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Effie Boone. At 49, American. Certain sacks must be plain to every smoker. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, independent tobacco experts present at the auctions year after year can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. Certain facts are plain. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, L-S-M-F-T. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers are on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, at 49, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. American. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. 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 There's fine smoking pleasure in fine tobacco. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. He married. It was certainly nice of Eddie Cantor to let me have his house. It sure was. You know, he was only kidding. He gave it to me for nothing. And just think, it has four bedrooms. Yeah, you'll make a fortune. <laughs> Mary, I'm not going to charge my friends. It's my fault that everybody can't stand me. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.